Hey folks, I'm Navar, and I'm welcoming you to Solar Punk Station, where we're building regenerative futures. Life started in the oceans, and you can't deny we've been drawn to the water since before we built the first city on the banks of the Euphrates. With about 80% of the world's population living within 100 kilometers of the coastline, the ocean has to be part of our solar punk future. Grab your flippy floppies, and let's discuss what is tidal punk. Tidal punk takes the environmental consciousness and appropriate technology of solar punk to the high seas. Sailing ships, autonomous seasteads, and cities flooded by the rising waters of climate change populate visions of the tidal punk future. Given the moon's influence on the tides, tidal punk and lunar punk will probably develop some interesting synergies as they both grow. The shipping industry currently accounts for about 5% of carbon emissions, but is trying to reduce that by 50% by 2050. Most cargo ships currently run on high sulfur diesel, but we once sailed the seas using just the power of the wind. While having a backup propulsion method available would be prudent, when the wind is blowing, cargo could move without the use of fossil fuels. Seasteading covers a variety of concepts for humans to make their home in the sea. Proponents of seasteading point to overcrowding and a lack of social innovation as reasons to move seaward. Some projects that could be considered under this umbrella are Sealand, various underwater habitats, and even aircraft carriers, although Tidal Punk Future would use those aircraft carriers as floating cities and not military installations. Project Entropy is a self-described solar punk makerspace flotilla with the aim to address plastic waste in the ocean and convert it into useful objects. The Micronation is also experimenting with distributed governance while it expands the frontiers of distributed manufacturing. While the Seasteading Institute and Blue Frontiers have interesting visions of the future, Project Entropy is making it real right now. Another project already on the water is the Flippy Floppy, a boat built entirely from plastic recovered from the ocean and the roadsides in Kenya. The Sea Orbiter Science Vessel is one of the most exciting projects happening in space. Planned as a full-time, ocean-going science vessel, the Sea Orbiter will have onboard laboratories and allow extended observation of the ocean. Parts of the ship will be kept at higher pressure to allow scientists to dive more often than would be possible from a surface vessel due to decompression issues like the bends. Venice is of course the most well-known flooded city in the world, but rising seas will soon give the world a number of similar locales. Even Venice is preparing for these rising floodwaters with the Mose Project, a giant floodgate designed to mitigate the worst tides from the Adriatic. NOAA has built an interactive sea level rise map which we'll put in a link down below, to show what areas will be most impacted by different sea level rise scenarios. In the United States, Miami is particularly vulnerable since its geology precludes a floodgate or wall system like the Mose. I'll have a link to my longer list of Tidal Punk resources on my blog in the description below, but I did want to point out a few of the highlights. I read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne as a kid, and it really, really stuck with me as a really, really cool story. I even considered a career in marine biology because of that book and one of the shows I'm about to talk about, but uh, it turns out I spent all my time designing the boats and not looking at the sea creatures, so uh, it seemed like engineering was more the path for me. Another early influence for me was the TV show Sequest DSV, particularly if you ignore the third season ever happened. Sequest is basically Star Trek in the ocean, and they even had a segment during the credits with oceanographer Bob Ballard sharing fun facts about the ocean. Ballard's book, The Eternal Darkness, is an excellent read on actual deep submersible vehicles, the DSV and Sequest, and those would include Alvin, which helped prove the theory of plate tectonics, find undersea vents, and even the wreck of the Titanic. Another oceanographer I think you should really check out is Dr. Sylvia Earle also known as Her Deepness. Dr. Earl has spent her life studying and trying to protect the ocean. Her current project, Mission Blue, is dedicated to creating what they call hope spots of protected ocean wilderness. There's a Netflix documentary under the same name that is sort of a mix of a biography of Dr. Earl and an investigation of human impacts on the ocean. It's pretty graphic, so be prepared if you want to watch it. There's a lot of 
lot of just there's a lot of viscera and just dead coral reefs and like it, it's a lot I watched it there was a lot of crying involved we'll, we'll just leave it at that so be be forewarned that it is not a happy-go-lucky documentary even though I know there are so many happy-go-lucky environmental documentaries out there yeah another title punk effort you might want to look into is the blue new deal which they discuss at length in the podcast how to save a planet since one of the co-hosts of that dr ayana elizabeth johnson is an oceanographer who developed a lot of the policies in the blue new deal for the elizabeth warren campaign and how to save a planet also has had a few other episodes that touch on title punk and oceanography issues uh, so I'll have some links down below again for that stuff. Tidal Punk's a big subject, just as anything touching on the ocean will be. So what did I miss? I'm sure there are a lot of things going on that I don't even know about, yet alone that I didn't have time to mention. Uh, please let me know down in the comments below, and maybe we can touch back on Tidal Punk in a future episode. Hello, I'm Bob Ballard from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. As mankind enters the next century, we will rely upon the ocean for more of our mineral resources. But before we begin to mine the hidden treasures of our planet, great care must be taken to protect the creatures that live there. The deep sea until recently has been untouched by the human hand, but its future preservation is now at risk. The challenge of our generation is to overcome self-interest and work together in a spirit of cooperation to resolve our differences using reason instead of force so that we can pass on to the next generation an ocean habitat we all can enjoy grab your flippy floppies and let's disgust <laughs> let me know in the comments and maybe we can double date